Hi, welcome back to this short video on the Shadow on Returns editor. At the end of the previous video, the first video, we had made a, a single room with a character spawner, a player spawner, and a, a camera region so that we could sort of see what we were doing and move around. And I said at the end of that video that I was going to expand the map a bit more to include some extra NPCs and so on. And I've now done that just by copying and pasting. And if you're following along, then hopefully you've done something similar. Um, so let's just jump straight in. Let's start putting some other characters in this world. The first things I want to get working are party members. And in order to get them working in the game, we're going to need a few more of this player spawner object right here that we use to spawn the custom player character in the world. So we could just copy and paste this, but it's available right up here in the asset library, top left, under all, we see player spawner. And I'm just going to grab and drop a few of these into the world. I'm going to take three because I think that's the maximum. Now by default these all have a certain property associated with them and over here in the properties window we can see with one selected it has PC spawn slot and it's assigned a value of zero. <clears throat> now the value of zero for a spawn slot is reserved for the player character, for the character that you create or that you import. So if we want these slots to be available for followers, we need to increment that value. Um, so I'm just going to select this first one that I dropped in and increment the value to 1. I'm going to increment this one to 2 and this one to 3. And now all we need to do to get these guys working, I'm going to save the game, is come up to the top bar, this little picture here, Edit Scene Properties. I'm going to open that and tab across to the Hiring menu. Now I'm going to check the box which says show hiring screen at map start which will just show us a screen where we could then fill out these three slots as long as we have slots available i'm going to come one level below available hiring slots i'm going to increase that from zero to three so we're going to see a hiring screen with three slots for three spawners the level range of available npcs is here and I'm just going to put it to the maximum possible value, so a minimum of 0 and a maximum of level 8. And then we're going to come down to Hiring Roster and Edit contact, Content Pack Source. And when I open this, we'll have a list of the available assets from which we can draw our hireable NPCs. Now, just by default, there are none checked here. For me, yours might be checked already. But if you're using Hong Kong, you want to have Hong Kong and HK Coder. Um, enabled, and if you're using Dragonfall, I imagine you could probably figure out what you need to enable. I'm not going to enable Tutorial 1, which is this content pack that we've created here, because we won't have any custom characters yet, but you can feel free to enable it or not. I'm going to click OK. And that's just about all. So we're going to click OK once more. We're going to save. And then we're going to test the scene. With this green arrow. And in the scratch pad, <clears throat> we have main character override, and I'm going to have a hireable main character rather than a loaded main character. It doesn't matter, but it's just, we'll just do it. And it'll automatically give us 10,000 new yen to start with. So let's just jump into the scene and see how it works. Just having a think. Tab back over to Hong Kong. We hit continue and we now have a hiring screen where we can just start grabbing some characters. Now you'll notice immediately there are lots and lots of duplicates of the same character and this is fine. What's happened is I've enabled the level range 0 to 8 so we can and the way that characters progress throughout Shadowrun is you don't have just one character that gets stronger and stronger and stronger over time for these NPCs. There are six or eight or ten versions of the same character, one, each one stronger than the one that came before, and each one is assigned a level completely arbitrarily. It has no relevance to the actual number of skill points or anything by the game. And then as you progress through the story, each scene will progressively sort of shift that window of what is hireable. So at the beginning of the game, you can only hire the level one version of Isabel. Once you get a few missions in, 
the level 1 version of Isabel will be disregarded and she won't appear in this screen, but the level 2 version will be available. And then further on, the level 3 will become available, but level 2 will be cast aside. And it appears to the player as if that one character is getting stronger, but in actual fact, they're just swapping new characters in and out with the same portrait. Um, so you can see immediately how you could use that yourself to create a consistent party of NPCs to follow the player around. Uh, for the purposes of this, I'm just going to grab just enough to fill out the space. These are, you know, story members, so they don't cost any money, but we'll spend some money on this guy and on that guy. And then we'll hit confirm. And when the scene loads in, we should see all of our followers uh, running around in the map. There we go. We can open the doors, <clears throat> we can run up and down the corridors, and if we open up the menu, we can see all their gear and so on and so forth. So that's all working fine. That's, but you know, if we come into this room, there's there's nothing for us to do. It's not very interesting. So let's tab back out, and let's start putting down some enemies. Now this can be done quickly and simply, or it can be done in a bit more detail. The simplest and quickest way to place down some enemies is to come up to the asset library and filter from all to characters. And we'll find in here a whole bunch of prefabricated sort of generic characters. And I'm just going to grab a bunch of knight errants, captain, actually we'll save the captain, we'll make a captain ourselves. We'll have a heavy explosive guy, human mage, an orc shotgun. And then we'll create a custom character to be their sort of their leader. So these are just generic level one knight errants. They'll come with all the correct equipment, all the correct skills, all the correct armor, and so on and so forth. And we could, if we felt we wanted to, edit any of these to make them a bit more specialized. And in fact, let's do that. No, let's not. Sorry, I'm being a bit flip floppy. I want to show you the actor spawner. So if we filter back to all, at the very top of the list with everything loaded, is this actor spawner, which is visually identical and in fact is mechanically identical to um, these other icons we've dropped, except for these ones are um, preformed. They have all the skills and things already, whereas this one is just a base template for a character. It could be anybody. And with this guy selected, we're going to come over to his properties window. The first thing we need to change under team right here, we need to change shadow runners, which is our team to Lone Star, which is the team shared by all these other guys already. It's Lone Star. That's Lone Star. Teams determine just who is friendly and who is enemy. And you can you get four teams by default, Shadowrunners, Gangers, Lone Star and Civilians, but you can create any number of teams that you want to um, in the scene properties. So you know, you're not restricted to just these, but for now it will be enough. We'll make him Lone Star. We could also change his actor type, which determines what his behavior would be in combat. Guard Protect is fine for our purposes. We could make him an adept who would then seek to close and use adept skills, maybe, or a mage who would try to take cover and use spells. And there's a few different options here, but we're just going to give this guy like a shotgun or something, so Guard Protect will be fine. And then in order to customize him, to make him a visually interesting character because right now he would just load up as like a naked human male with no weapons or skills. We need to come up to this little chess man here in his properties. Edit character instance. We'll enable that. And this is just the character sheet and you can enable this or view this sheet for any spawner in the game. And in here we could choose a preformed um, set of skills and attributes. So we could make him anything. We could make him have the skills and attributes of a Basilisk if we wanted, but we'll just make him just a basic knight errant um, human pistol, let's say. We could randomize his appearance and we could call him an errant pistol, or if we didn't want to do that, we could leave it on none and we could come down to the layer below and choose particular costumes for him and appearances. Or, yeah, a third option would be again to come down to Seattle, go to Core, and in here, under Core, we have the options for each gender of each species, or each race. Um, and this is the default 
model for that gender and race. So if we made him a troll male, he would be a naked male troll. And we could then tab across to equipment and find some appropriate clothes for him under here. HK NPC outfits. Let's do that, why not? He'll look strange, he won't look quite right, but we'll make him a, look like a corporate mage. If we come back over to this um, panel on the left, we've made him a troll. But we can also customize his skin color, his horns, his beard if he has one. And we do that with this uh, field here, which said input portrait code. And basically, to use this field, we need to implement or input a alphanumeric string. Um, and I can't remember them off the top of my head. They are available on wikis. But luckily, we have this button right here. And we can click randomize. And it's given him, I think, skin six, hair one, beard five, and tusks four. I think that's tusks. We could also give him a portrait. Although by default, you know, there's not much chance. If we just randomize his appearance, there's not much chance that his portrait will look anything like his, um, his physical appearance in the game. And we can also give him a name. We'll call him Guard Captain. Guard Captain. Um, underneath equipment, we also need to give him some stuff to fight with. We've made him a level 1 errant human pistol, but that's just for his skills. If we come over to equipment, again, we could add things here individually, so we could just find under here um, pistols, and then just choose out of this list. An alternate way is to come to the drop down sheet here under equipment sheet, and this will allow us to give him a predetermined set of equipment that is appropriate for certain characters. And again, we could scroll down here to Errant Level 1 Pistol, click this green cross, and it gives him a grenade and a pistol. And I'm happy with that. He's not very strong, but he doesn't need to be. So let's save. We'll double check he's on the right team. He's Lone Star. Everybody else is Lone Star. So let's save once more and test the scene. And now we should have a fight ready and waiting for us as soon as we open this door. Once we've done this, we'll maybe implement a, an NPC, uh, a neutral. Just, I don't know who these people are. So there we go, that'll be fine. Oh, we've got four slots, so that guy. And I won't make you sit through the whole fight. Okay, now we're in the map with our hired characters. We run down the corridor. And as soon as we open the door, a fight breaks out. Jeez Louise. And it's not going to be um, massively interesting or engaging. They won't exhibit any particular interesting behavior because they've got no cover they can stand behind. You know, they've got nothing they can do, really. Um, so, yeah, that's all working as planned. We could make those bodies persistent if we want to. It's not really an issue. So let's tab back out. And to create a friendly NPC, or at least a neutral NPC, it's much the same process as to create some of these guys, um, or to create that captain that we made, that troll. We just come up here, grab an actor spawner, drag him in, and with him selected in his properties window, where it says shadow runners now, we just change shadow runners to civilians, and we change actor type from guard to non-combatant. And you'll notice by the way under here, you can also change it to player. You can, by making this player and that Shadowrunners, you could implement custom followers that way. Um, but it's a bit janky and it doesn't always exhibit the cleanest behavior. Um, I've noticed a few small bugs doing things this way, but it's an option. Um, frankly, I don't see that it does anything that you couldn't do with the system I outlined at the beginning of this video, but maybe we'll talk about it in more detail later. So for now, non-combatant civilian. We'll open up his character sheet and we'll just randomize from um, Punk Civilian. 
Now he's a non-combatant, so it doesn't matter what she is. Um, he doesn't need any equipment or any armor because that will be generated by this randomizer over here. The problem or the limitation of this randomizer is that every time we enter this scene, um, he will be re-randomized within the bounds established by punk civilian. So every time we load up this map, there will be a different punk civilian there. This is good for creating background NPCs who can sort of subtly come and go. But if you want a sort of defined character, you'll want to go in and um, say, for example, let's just say, yeah, we'll make him like a Hong Kong human male pirate. That would be fine. And we'll give him a We'll give him a portrait so that we can have a discussion with him later. And we'll also give him a name. Barry. Um, yeah, he doesn't need equipment. He should have the appropriate clothes already. So let's just save. Save once more and go back into the game. And once we've confirmed that Barry is working, we'll call it a day. And maybe in the next video we'll talk about I don't know, conversations, maybe some triggers to begin this combat, and maybe some cover and things, so that the fight can be a bit more interesting. Continue, grab a character, jump in. And there we go, we've got um, our pirate guy standing around in his pirate clothes. So, yeah, if you followed along now, you will have a party that can follow you around, a friendly or neutral NPC that will stand around waiting to give us a quest or sell us something, and a bunch of guys to have a fight with. So we're kind of getting there, we're getting some pretty full features in. Once we've got a couple of quests in, and maybe some way to transition from one scene to another and transition between discrete areas within a scene, I guess we'll be there. But um, I'll see you next time.